Hi everyone and welcome back to my sick devlog on my Voxel game engine. I just want to start by saying thanks for all the support on my videos over the past month. The channel has grown massively and we've just hit 7,000 subscribers which is amazing. Also, if you guys are interested, I've started a Discord server. You can join that with the link in the description. I also want to shout out my Discord moderators for managing the server and organizing some challenges for you guys to partake in that I can show in my next video. Now, what did I get done this month? Well, I've read all the comments you guys have left, especially about the compression on the last videos, and I wanted to fix this problem with some new scenes. However, I only started working on some new scenes later in the month. This was my main goal this month, but the first thing I started with was to experiment with insane octree depths. I rewrote my coordinate system from the last devlogs and it's now much better at changing levels. And then I tried to zoom in on a scene that is the size of the Milky Way galaxy. So it's got 10 to the 24 voxels across at one millimeter resolution. However, as you can see, at these scales, distant voxels become unloaded and don't render anymore. This is because the renderer is actually culling the voxels because of precision issues. There's another issue that I'm only getting around 30 FPS in this complex scene. Both of these things are something that I'm aiming to fix in a rewrite of my ray casting algorithm, but I'll touch on that later in the video. Next, I wanted to clean up my rendering code. So I started on the priority calculations that decide the priority of a voxel to be loaded. This system is based off the size of the voxel and its distance. I wanted to create a fast depth calculation that doesn't require the GLSL distance function that I'm currently using, as this involves a square root, which can be quite slow. And that would be called for every voxel you traverse in the tree. So that would improve performance by removing the square root. And as you can see, I updated the depth buffer calculation and it works the same, just faster. It's using data that I already have in the Raycaster to calculate the depth. So the calculation's much faster. I then combine this back with the voxel size to generate the priority. So voxels that are larger and closer to the camera, basically filling up more screen space, get loaded faster. Now let's get around to changing the scene. I decided that getting some better scenes in the engine was an important step and moving away from random noisiness was a good idea. It was my main goal to load in scenes for Magicka Voxel this month and that wasn't actually too challenging as the creator of Magicka Voxel has actually provided a layout of the bytes for his Vox files. So I wrote a file loader that loaded these into my engine allowing importing of more interesting models. After loading in a few models, I started to notice a big problem. The FPS was not stable at all and would drop when rendering even simple models. I then did a performance test with a complex model and only saw 20 FPS. In this picture, you can see the redder a pixel is, the more complex that ray is to calculate. And the yellow is just too complex to render and it's overflown. So this does not seem good as most of the scene in this picture is red or yellow. This means that the rays are just too complex. At first I was kind of confused as my previous scenes had been running at 75 frames a second with a lot more voxels. I did increase the render resolution to full 1080p and this puts more strain on the graphics card, but that doesn't explain the massive performance difference I'm getting. And after a bit more poking around in the code, I realized that my previous scenes, even though they had more voxels, were very easy to render. This was because they were perfectly square in some places, meaning a ray could jump large sections of the model very efficiently but the magic of voxel scenes were much more balanced and organic, meaning the ray had to step a lot more and do a lot more intersection tests. So this would bring down the performance a lot on those scenes. This meant for the rest of the month, my goal was to fix this performance issue because this was a big problem. I started to try and address this by improving the ray stepping through the voxels because this is the bit that does the most calculations. 
I wanted to add a pointer for each voxel that points to its neighbors. So when you exit a voxel, it would easily be able to jump to its neighbor. I worked on this new ray casting algorithm for a few weeks, rewriting most of my rendering code and generation code to generate neighbor voxels that point to each other and be able to ray cast them efficiently. After I got this working, I actually noticed there was a performance difference, but it was only two FPS. So all the work I did was basically for nothing. So it was back to the drawing board to come up with a better ray casting algorithm. I'm currently working on implementing one of those into the rendering engine right now, but it's not ready for this devlog. So I'm gonna have to show you that next time. I currently also have a lot of exams and university work over the next month. So progress might be a bit slower than I would have liked. In any case, I'll see you guys in the next video. And as always, thanks for watching.